So confidence can get you pretty far in a lot of scenarios, whether it's, you know, romantically, uh, socially, financially, whatever it may be, confidence always helps. So this is going to be, you know, how to get more confident. First, I'm going to tell you a story. Then I'm going to tell you a few tips or tricks. So first off, the story. I was reading um, Mark Cuban's book, uh, The Sport of Business, and I finished it. I think I, this is the second time I read it, I think, because I was going through it. And I was like, I've definitely read this before. Um, so anyways, uh, we're going to start off. Mark Cuban, he, uh, he's the billionaire owner of the Dallas Mavericks. He, um, when he was 25, 24, you know, 26, something like that, he, uh, he was doing well. You know, he was making some money. He was making like 60 grand a year for a young person that was really good. He got invited to this Microsoft party, okay? Now, he got invited to this party because he was selling a lot of Microsoft products. He was one of their top salesperson for, salespeople for a while, so whatever. Um, he went to the Microsoft party with these two ladies, okay? He had, uh, they're, you know, apparently good looking ladies, whatever, two extra tickets. He would know, he walked in, arms around them, all that stuff. So he walks in, uh, you know, everything's going fine. Um, then they see, you know, Bill Gates just over there in the middle of the dance floor. He's dancing away. He's having fun. He's all, you know, confident and all. Uh, he's just, he just likes the attention, you know, little nerdy, skinny, you know, Bill Gates. So anyways, Mark Cuban still, you know, talks to these girls and, um, you know, he goes and, you know, he says, I'm going to go buy you some drinks. You know, I'll be right back. So he goes, gets the drinks, um, comes back five, 10 minutes later. His girls are gone. <laughs> the two ladies that he had wrapped around his arms, they're gone. He can't find them. Um, the next day he gets, um, he meets up with one of his friends who was also at the party. And uh, his friend says, um, yeah, so right after you left your girls, um, Bill Gates came over and he started chatting them up and they stayed over with him <laughs> overnight. And so uh, Mark Cuban had his, his two hot dates stolen by the nerdy billionaire Bill Gates. And so Mark Cuban learned um, uh, that night that money sure makes you a lot more handsome. <laughs> I think that was the book in his, that was the quote in his book. So here's what I, here's what I'm going at. Here's what I'm getting at here. Okay, so Bill Gates, you look at the guy, especially this was what, 70s, 80s, something like that. He was ve he's very small, very skinny guy. Um, yet he was in the middle of the dance floor Everyone, like, everyone's looking at him. He was having drinks. He was having fun. He didn't care. How did he have so much confidence? So the one thing for me that actually helped me with my confidence was, is actually money. And that's unfortunate to say, but actually being wealthy kind of gave me a lot more confidence, especially in, in a lot of other ways, socially, romantically, whatever, right? And so, uh, yeah, Mark Cuban learned that day that, you know, if you have a lot of money, it ups your confidence to the point where, well, one, girls will find you more attractive because, well, you're more confident, you know, you, you're funnier, you're more enthusiastic, you're more energetic, you're more interesting because you're more confident. And also you have a lot of money. So, you know, unfortunately, a lot of girls like that. Like I, there was this, uh, isn't, there was a, oh, there was a test. It was by the Mythbusters. I think that someone who is more financially stable or is like in the next class like there's middle class upper middle class upper class and then super upper class ultra wealthy all that stuff if you are like one class up but the same physical attractiveness your overall attractiveness goes up by like 20 percent or something i think it was was it 20 percent? it was like 16 to 20 percent or something like that so if you're like a five you could be approaching, you know, a seven overall attractiveness. If you're five physically, you could be a seven. This is just, you know, basic numbers, right? But here, here's what I'm getting at is that um, for me, I was not a confident person, especially in high school. And I, I was a big kid in high school. I was, uh, you know, I'm six foot three, six foot four. In high school, I was like a 200 pounds and I could run, th I was like, a, I could run faster than most kids my age. I was very athletic. Zero confidence whatsoever. In fact, I remember this one time where a kid that I knew since grade one, uh, and it had always been around in my classes and stuff. He, uh, it was in university. Um, I started building up my confidence, and then uh, I talked to him, and then he's just like, "I think that this is actually the first time I've heard your voice." 
it was quite weird actually it was weird and that's when i was starting to build up my confidence financially i was talking to more people so very first thing that helped my confidence was was literally money okay and i know that that's a it's not going to work for everyone not everyone can get more money right but i thought that this was bullshit i did think that it was bullshit but like it's it's weird what happens when when suddenly you start making some money you move up in the social class in a way you kind of be like you have this intrinsic thing where like you know what i'm kind of a good good catch i mean i'm a cool person to talk to you know and it's just you have that thought whether it's true or not you kind of turn into a little bit a little bit of a douche but at the same time you're you're still humble in a way like uh, i always think that i'm so lucky to have my girlfriend she's like the perfect girlfriend right now i don't know if it's gonna last it might last forever i have no fucking clue right but like there's kind of like this balance you should have but anyways so money was the number one thing for me. Number two was actually like YouTube. Number two thing that helped for me was like actually talking to a camera for like an hour a day or 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day. That helped me physically talk better. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't have this conversation. Um, I couldn't be talking like this five, 10 years ago. I just didn't have the confidence. I mean, I couldn't talk, and this really helped with my language skills, which actually helps me socially. So one thing that you're, if you're awkward socially, one of the things you can do before you go out and start hanging out with friends or, or before you try to get some more friends is actually like talk to a camera. Talk to, and then, you know, if you want to, post it online, seriously, and see what people think. That helped me a lot by just posting videos and stuff. So one of the things you can do is, Obviously, just you know, just talk. Even if it's to yourself, you're gonna seem crazy. It helps. Um, another thing that I think is important is, is self-awareness. So, <laughs> for example, um, so right now I'm not in the best shape. I'm in okay shape. I mean, I'm a little bit fat right now for myself. But like, I remember, um, I don't know four four years ago or so i was in really good shape and i knew i was in good shape but like i also didn't really know i was in good shape and does that make sense like i had a six pack and all that stuff and i was you know really really fit but then i'd be like i'm not like the hulk i'm not like arnold schwarzenegger and uh i wasn't self-aware enough to realize that if you have a six pack you're in like the top five percent of physical fitness in north america like that's something you got to think about but also like self-awareness like know what's bad about you so i know for example that i'm not that funny i mean i'm energetic i'm not that funny and so i can make fun of myself when i you know say a joke and it no one gets it kind of thing right um being self-aware helps a lot and just know like where your position is and generally like most people watching this if you have a computer and an internet connection you're a catch for the most part, I mean, unless you, you're, you know, super overweight and you're super douche or something, but if you're super douche, you're confident, right? Let's get that, idea. Let's get that straight. Um, so yeah, just being self-aware, I found helps a shit ton. Another point on, you know, self-awareness is like kind of knowing, knowing your strengths and weaknesses, I guess, you know, I've kind of talked about that, how like, I know I'm not a funny person, but you know, I'm energetic. I'd mentioned that already, but you know, something like right now, I know I have a little, you know, not a belly, but like I have a little bit of a belly compared to how I used to be. So, you know, I kind of like to poke fun at it because, you know, my girlfriend's, you know, she has no fat on her whatsoever, right? So I like to poke fun at it. Like, hey, I have a little bit of belly. I'm okay with it. Just be like open with everyone about it. Like, look, my eyes. Oh my God. Did they, did they just reflect white there? Oh, that's weird. Like my eyes, super, super dark all the time. And I talk about that to, you know, I, I mentioned I look like Frankenstein when I take these glasses off. Now, I, I don't walk around with these all the time. It's usually just during the day and when I have a lot of light because my eyes hurt all the time. But like I make fun of my I make fun of my acne and all that stuff. Like it's it's funny because I know I have a lot of good things. I mean I know I'm interesting and cool to talk to, and I, I got money and that's nice. <laughs> um, it's just I think that another thing too is that um, here's the thing. Here's what I think might be the most important thing of all this um it should be don't give a shit okay 
No one gives a shit. This is the number one thing. Number one thing is that no one cares about anything that you do. So I'll give you an example here. Um, high school, presentation. Tell me, uh, if you're 25 years old, tell me about Sandra's art presentation in the ninth grade. Go. Can't do it, right? No one cares, okay? No one cares. You remember your own presentation? You probably fucking do. You probably remember most of your own presentations, but the second someone else's comes up, unless it was something really, like, really, really, you know, I don't know, extravagant or something, or real big fuck up or something like that, then you probably don't remember it. And that's normal, because people only care about themselves. They don't, like, when I see someone who's maybe a little bit overweight on the street, I don't be like, I'm not, I don't judge the person. I'm just like, oh, that guy's cool. Like that, if he has a beard, I'm like, okay, hopefully he doesn't kill me. <laughs> but like, still like, it's, it's kind of, no one cares. Like you can, I've, you know how many times I've gone to the store in my pajamas? Like no one cares. Would you care seriously if um, one of your friends went to go pick up some food in pajamas? Would you care? No. Like why, why does any of that matter? Like just. As long as you're healthy and you're happy, and I guess a little bit wealthy, then like, that's, that's all there is. That's all you really need. Don't worry about anyone else's problems because no one worries about yours. That's a good quote. I should write that down. Tweet at me. If you, if you tweet at me, I'll retweet it. I'm gonna forget by the time this video is over. So your give a shit should be just zero. So think, yeah, again, just think about anything that your friends have done. Okay, anything that your peers have done that is important to them, but you just don't remember. Okay, you, like, I still love the school presentation example. Like, that's my favorite one is just like, you can probably remember a lot of your own presentations, if not all of them. But the second, it's, you know, that girl who sits in the fourth row that prepped for her presentation for 10 hours the night before to put all this work and you, you don't remember. Because no one cares. All right, so here's the thing. Like if, you, if you're overweight, no one cares, okay? As long as you're healthy, no one cares. Like if you have acne, no one cares. It's, are you a good person? Do I get along with you? Do I connect with you? That's more important. Um, if you're socially awkward, no one cares, okay? Actually, I should say that school bullies care. School bullies might be funny. But like if you're with a partner or something and you connect with them, that's all that matters. I mean, if you're socially awkward, no one cares. Okay, if you go stand in the corner for the entire prom night, no one cares. All right, if you go and dance up a storm and make fun of yourself, no one cares. No matter what you do, no one fucking cares. I mean, I went to prom. I've never danced before in my life. I probably was one of the only times I ever danced. I hate dancing. All right, I went to the middle fucking floor and I was like, I had no confidence, but I still didn't give a shit. Like, I didn't care. I was never going to see these half these people again. I just went in and started dancing like a maniac. And uh, it's just something that I think helped me a lot. Give it the give a shit should be zero. Also, take a step back. I guess that's another thing too. Is if there's um, any sort of fear behind something. So if you're fear that you're not a good speaker, fear that you're not a good salesperson, and you're not confident in your ability, take a step back. All right, that's this is one thing I like to for all of my problems. Pretty much, it's like okay. Um, if you think that you aren't a good speaker, whatever, so what? You aren't a good speaker. That's okay. You're probably good at other things. And guess what? You can probably practice and get better. I mean, that's something I love to think about. It was like, um, I don't know if this is kind of different, but if uh, people that are worried about exams, about, I don't know, um, job interview, whatever. So I always ask people that get worried about that stuff. Okay. What, let's just say you get a zero on this exam. What happens? What happens after that if you get a zero and you just don't show up? Okay, so you can probably, if you're in university, you fail the semester, you have to retake the course. Um, if you want to, you can retake the course and then you graduate three months later and or four months later. Okay, that's scenario two. You can drop out of school, get a job, you'll still be able to eat, you'll still be able to feed everyone, you can still be happy, you could still be do have a great life. 
You could still build your own company. No one's stopping you from doing that. All right. So if you fail at a job interview, guess what? You're going to get more job interviews. You're going to get more opportunities elsewhere. I mean, there's um, just take a step back. Yeah, sure. This may seem like a dream job interview, like it's for some tech company or something that you want to work at. But take a step back, realize it's not the end of the world and realize that you will probably end up with a better job in the future somewhere else that you haven't even that you don't even know about yet. So that's uh, that's some of the things. But anyways, I think that's going to kind of wrap it up. That was a side tangent there. Uh, in summary, the biggest thing that helped me was money. Talking to a camera, publicizing it, self-awareness, and don't give a shit. Um, you can also do the like classical psychology um, experiment where um, the more exposed you are to something, the easier it is for you. So if you're fear of your, you know, I don't know, your social, um, your social standing, or you fear talking to people, or you're not confident in your talking ability, just go up and talk to people, and it'll get easier as time goes on, I swear. So I think that's going to wrap it up. I think uh, hopefully it helps. Do you guys have any tips for what helps you be more confident? I mean, I think I listed my four. I mean, obviously working out, exercising, eating better, that's all helps too. But um, at the end of the day, these are the four that I think anyone can kind of control themselves because, you know, body, there's genetic stuff sometimes. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people. I'll see you guys in the next video.